So the next speaker was Francesco Arneodo, which uh, is coming from the New York University of uh, New York University in Abu Dhabi. Uh, he is an experimental physicist, but will uh, uh, will uh, and as experimental physicist, physicist uh, in uh, in Abu Dhabi, he will. Uh, uh, he, he will teach us, he will, uh, he will present us uh, the point of view of uh, a university where the uh, possibility to have data open uh, from the rest of the world is helping very much to support the education and research careers uh, in, a, in a country which is uh, starting uh, uh, to, to, to work uh, deeper and deeper in space activities and in uh, uh, in uh, scientific uh, space activities in particular. Um, this will, uh, will uh, show us how uh, the effect of having this initiative, where we are strongly convinced that will, uh, uh, will be uh, an, uh, uh, an engine to, the, to, to, to this uh, initiative, will help uh, the countries uh, which uh, are uh, uh, in a process to become uh, members of the club of uh, uh, spacefaring nation uh, to uh, push you, uh, to push you with uh, this path. Leave you the floor, Francesco. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah. Ah, you are here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we swapped. You swapped. <laughs> yeah, we swapped. Thanks for the introduction. So uh, <laughs> okay, so I will I will say something about uh, the usefulness of uh, uh, open data in uh, in uh, in education from the perspective of a newly of a recent uh, uh, educational institution in the Middle East, and you see on that sli on that slide uh, a glimpse of our new campus in in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so I guess I have to yes. So just uh, let's just to say a few words about this institution, which, uh, as I said, is quite recent. was established in uh, 2010 uh, in a campus downtown Abu Dhabi, and we moved uh, we moved recently, almost three years ago, in a new location uh, close to Abu Dhabi, um, but actually a little bit apart from the downtown uh, on Sayat Island, and. Uh, uh, well, we have we we are a small university, but uh, we have four divisions: art, humanities, engineering, science, <laughs> social sciences. Um, but I would like to, yeah, I would like to, our our uh, specialty uh, is the student body. I think this is a, probably the most diverse uh, college in the world. I, I, I mean, to my knowledge, at least we have uh, students from 110 countries. We don't have many students so far, just 1,000, but we are going to double this number in a few years. So we are growing, slowly growing. And I think that this diversity um, is also makes us a good uh, place where to experiment with, uh, with uh, ast physics, uh, astronomy and astrophysics, the concept of open data. Uh, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> so so uh, just to give, to put <laughs> things in context, uh, we are placed in the UAE, in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, I would say, without too much bragging, that uh, we are by far the, the best uh, um, university in the area, with um, students coming from, I said, from many countries, but uh, the countries which are most represented are the UAE, of course, with a 13%, and United States, and then uh, all the others are following. Um, the faculty body also reflects uh, more or less the same diversity, even, even uh, of course, at a slow, at a uh, lower, lower grade. And this is a, a rendering of the Sadiat Island uh, uh, when all the all the infrastructures and the museums would be completed. So far, only the Louvre Museum has been completed, but not yet, not yet uh, uh, operative. So at uh, in at uh, NYU Abu Dhabi, the physics faculty is about. Uh, Ten people, and it's strongly uh, f um, skewed towards uh, astronomy and astrophysics. So we have uh, research going on on galaxy formation, exoplanets, uh, uh, radio astronomy for water masers, uh, supernova remnants, uh, dark matter, which is me actually, uh, well, experimental dark matter in my, in that case, and also we are kind of, we are moving the first steps towards uh, uh, space in the sense that we are working on a small uh, CubeSat project, uh, of which I'll talk later. Um, we do have, of course, the courses that we give to students uh, reflect the, the, what the faculty is doing. So we, we do offer uh, astrophysics, uh, a course called multi-wavelength astronomy. Then we have course that, that 
courses that are typical of a, a college of liberal arts, which is what NYU Abu Dhabi is, being at the same time a strong research university. Uh, so the core courses are courses offered to all students, not necessarily doing physics or astronomy. And so they make, I mean, they, they learn, I mean, in, that courses, in those courses, students learn how, f how physicists or scientists work, even though they are not going to be scientists in their, in their future career. Of, and of course, we have uh, also outreach activities, and, uh, which are very important in the countries. Um, and uh, in tho all those activities, we do use uh, astronomy data, and uh, especially open astronomy data, access publicly accessible astronomy data. And uh, because we don't, uh, presently, we are not uh, part of any big collaboration that produces those data, so we have to actually use what's on the market. Um, we use those data for outreach. We use for, the, for them for the core courses, which, as I said, are typical of a liberal arts college. And, of course, we use them for ast the astronomy courses and for our research. Um, so, uh, as, uh, as um, I was said before, uh, um, the UAE is, uh, is very keen on space development. Um, they, and also they're very keen on education, because this is, in, in so, so to speak, in the DNA of the nation, which was founded by Sheikh Zayed in uh, uh, 14, no, sorry, uh, 45 years ago, and he strongly um, emphasized the importance of education for the, this, this country to emerge as a, as a modern country. And um, they're investing in space. A Mars probe will be launched in 2020 to be there, I mean, in Mar uh, on Mars, around the atmosphere of Mars, uh, uh, for the 50th anniversary of the foundation of the country, which is a very, uh, very important date. Um, it, it has been uh, uh, emphasized by the, by the organizers of this mission that the data will be publicly available after, uh, of course, the usual uh, time, which is probably six months or one year, in which uh, UAE scientists will, will be given priority. Um, a space agency has been created in 2015, and there is a strong collaboration between our university and the space agency. And maybe this could be a good laboratory uh, where uh, we could develop and test uh, open universe solutions. So this is an idea that I'm just uh, throwing uh, out. Uh, we have a few projects with them, and one of them, I would like to mention it because it was born here, the space agency is here in, in, uh, the, in this very place, uh, when two students of ours uh, worked with uh, Carlotta Pittori and uh, Paolo Giommi for, for a few weeks, and they learned about uh, Agile data, they learned about uh, terrestrial gamma ray flashes, and now they launched the idea of building a CubeSat uh, to study, to better study the terrest terrestrial gamma ray flashes. And then there is also the project of building a radio, uh, radio dish for uh, deep space communications that would also serve as a uh, as an instrument for science, and again, that would be the could be the opportunity to to uh, experiment open uh, uh, data, open universe protocols. Um, so, as I said, in our courses, we do use uh, astronomy data. I'm not teaching particularly. I mean, I'm not teaching those courses specifically, but I've been I've been heading the chairing the department of physics for a couple of years, so I know what's going on. And our faculty uh, use. Uh, um, data from various catalogs and various databases. I just uh, mentioned a few. Uh, so two mass SDSS uh, and uh, the SWIFT and Maxi satellites. And also uh, what we do is uh, we purchase data from optical uh, or radio um, telescopes and we use them for the, our courses, not only for research. Um, so just an example, these are images collected by students in one of these core courses called SPACE. They, um, they actually uh, had uh, time from this LCO, Robotic Telescope Network, and they generated these optical images. Um, I would also like to mention a, a so-called SPACE Center, which is the, uh, a, a group of, of few researchers, including uh, Professor Srinivasan, uh, who is quite, quite known, and they are working on helioseismology and astroseismology, and they are going to establish a, a huge data center in Abu Dhabi. And again, that could be an opportunity to uh, implement, experiment, open universe protocols. Um, of course, the advantages, what are the advantages of using the public uh, data, of astronomy <coughs> public data in the classroom? They, are, of course, are cheap. There is no cost involved. 
uh, it's cool for the students because they, it gives them the impression they're doing real science, even though it's just an undergraduate course, and especially when they use uh, uh, data that they uh, contribute to, to, I mean, to, to take uh, when, they, uh, when we buy uh, time from telescopes. And of course, uh, some of the yeah. interested students will go on go doing research with us, mm -hmm. and yeah. this is also important. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they start training on real data before they uh, start working with the faculty. Um, one of the uh, problems we have, and I quoted their comment of one of my faculty, that he says that my, one of the main challenges is not to make the data public, but to make the resources easy to find and use for, for students in public. Sometimes only the raw products are available, so it's important to teach students how to reduce and analyze the data. It would be great if all telescope data were pipelined, reduced, and made available to the public, and this initiative could help with that. Um, just to make an example, this is what you find on the, on the web page of the SDSS survey. So there are fa actually five, if you want to use the data, if your faculty want to use the data with your students, you have, you have to deal with the possibly five websites, <laughs> with five different purposes and most likely with five different uh, um, uh, formats. So you have to first train yourself and your students to understand how to get and analyze those data. So of course the open universe, an open universe framework would help, uh, greatly help with that uh, approach. Then uh, again if you are a teacher want want to, to, to find resources for, for your courses, you, you find several several websites, some of them we have seen yesterday. And then if I, for instance, there is a long list of resource, resources here on the Caltech website. And if I click on that, I get uh, uh, three pages of, uh, of databases, of optical, in, of many wavelengths. It's, it's a really, really a long list. So it's, e even, I mean, it's also hard for, for the teacher if it's, he's not really into astronomy to select uh, uh, which is the right source and how to approach the, the problem. Now I click on this and everything will crash. Um, yes, Q digital scale. Wow, okay. <laughs> so let me go on. So I would say that uh, there is a strong opportunity in the educational world, in the academic world, uh, to help with these kind of initiatives. So for instance, in Abu Dhabi, in NYU Abu Dhabi, we have th something which uh, I didn't know before coming there. Uh, we organize hackathons, so um, 24 hours uh, uh, stretches of time in which uh, many students, the best coders among students, gather together and they code. Code for some purposes, of course. So, so uh, imagine you want to, to design a new app for uh, Open Universe. Well, you could organize a hackathon in which the best students would work together and come up eventually with a nice app that could uh, interface with some set of data and, and uh, uh, make make people able to use those data. Of course, uh, in our case, we are a so-called emerging country, at least from the educational point of view, and there everything is new. So there is also, uh, I think, a stronger potential because people are more excited uh, about doing new things and especially excited about astronomy. And also, as I said, uh, our institution is really a very diverse academic environment, and I would say that uh, things like transparency and openness are actually are part of our DNA as an institution. Sorry. So uh, I would like to conclude with a, just a caveat, risks. So one of the things I, uh, one of the problems we have with students is probably what also in Europe ha happens that uh, few, I mean it's difficult to attract students to science. So most students prefer to do economics, uh, to do psychology, to do art and literature, which is, of, of course, is, is, is very good. Sociology, yeah. Uh, in, in computer science also and that is very popular. But when, then we, when we talk about mathematics, physics, astronomy, astrophysics, students are a little bit scared. So sometimes one of the things we do, and this uh, open universe approach could be one of the things we would could do for st to attract students is to make uh, uh, science, physics, astronomy look easy, sexy, cool. But then the student, students come, they start, and they find that actually it is difficult. So I think we have to strike the right balance between making science popular, easy, accessible, and also not to hide too much under the carpet the fact that science is intrinsically difficult. So this is just a word of, of caution that I would like to launch. 
And with that, I'm done. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Francesco. It has been very, very interesting hearing from you on this, uh, uh, on this uh, new approach on the university, full of uh, uh, full of uh, initiatives, uh, which uh, which make us coming back to the days where science and in particular space activities were really something uh, uh, challenging, something uh, uh, pioneering our future. Um, we both chair have a question to you before giving the floor <laughs> to the audience or to a question of the audience. Can we? <laughs> Can, are we allowed? Uh, we have heard from somewhere in your presentation that you purchase data. Uh, yes, you can buy data from telescopes. From but buy it in exchange of money? Yes. Really? Yes. This is oh, something uh, I didn't know. I, I want to uh, be honest. <laughs> This so, uh, so this does that have an economic yeah. value, uh, yeah. sirs? I want to. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember <laughs> that our colleagues. It's really uh, very new to me. Yeah? Our colleagues has made a study on the willingness to pay for the agile. Yeah. So, data. actually, to be, so, <laughs> I mean, to be uh, precise, we, we buy telescope time. Ah, okay. uh -huh. telescope ah. time. Telescope time. And then, ah. in, the, in that time, the data we, buy, we, we, we. No, no, sorry. You collect the data. We, we collect the data we want, and uh, okay. uh, yeah, ah, we buy okay. time. Which is not that different, but which it's, uh, which uh, d deserve uh, the idea to make a study eh, on a space uh, economy uh, study that, that on, on the cost of. Uh, <laughs> she was <laughs> leading or involved in one of these. So, <laughs> so le let me give you the floor, uh, Professor Benvenuti. Yeah. Ah, yes. Uh, first. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning, Gail Allen from NASA. And I thank you for your presentation. I think the information is going to be helpful for us as we build our infrastructure for open data, open science. So I appreciate that. And um, I just wanted to, you mentioned hackathons, so I just wanted to put a plug in for our International Space Apps Challenge that's at the end of the month. Uh, if anybody's interested, um, you can go to spaceappschallenge.org. But it's a 20, it's a 48 hour hackathon. Okay, uh, spaceappschallenge.org. It, uh, 15,000 people participated last and year. where is that? It's all over. There's one here. Oh, it's a global. It's thing. a global. You can sign up as a, oh, nice. a virtual team. Thanks. Thanks. I will propagate the, the information to my students. Hey, Professor Benvenuti, you want There's to a question there. <laughs> uh, just to <laughs> for Delfina, I mean, buying telescope time is much cheaper than operating a full to build a full telescope. So I that is a common it. practice, so, so no, yes, no problem yes. with that. No, just a very, very quick question. Is this uh, Sharia Center for Astronomy and Space Science connected to, to your university? This is a, the, yes and no, it's another university. It's University for Sharjah, yeah. which is close to Dubai. Yes. They have this uh, newly established center. They are quite active and we do have, I mean, collaborations we do, but we are, it's not part of our institution. Okay. We, Thank you. we are in Abu Dhabi, they are close to Dubai. We move to the following speaker. Yeah. Thank you. No, we have an additional question. Yeah. The last one. Uh. The two last one. Um, I beg you to, uh, to be a Andy bit Pollock short again. because we are late. In uh, the thanks very much for uh, uh, something that I think gets close to uh, the, the core of the meaning of Open Universe, so I enjoyed that a lot. Um, as far as hackathons are concerned, uh, did, did you, um, can you give us an idea of the conditions that individual data providers uh, need to fulfill to be able to, um, uh, to enable hackathons to take place? And, uh, and so which data do you use for hackathons is, is my well, question. So far hackathons ha have been, uh, have been uh, aimed to, provide, to, to create uh, software for social goods, uh, so I, I, can, I can send you some examples. So, so I, I have to, to study to answer your question, honestly. Okay, yes. thanks. I will send you something. Do, do what we have the last, the last. Please no. um, You are talking about uh, hosting uh, a, a big archive, a big database. Yes, data. for, for uh, Helios is, uh, Helio and Astero seismology. That was exactly my question. Thank yes. You. So you intend to be uh, um, a data provider for, for a wider community? That's, I think that's the day of this space science. This is the space center of this group of researchers that we are hosting. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been very much interesting. Maybe we could do an additional swap if Professor... Uh, let me introduce... No.